Hello, my name is Dr. Ray O'Connor. I'm a general practitioner. I'm also a senior research fellow in the University of Limerick uh, Graduate Entry Medical School and assistant program director in the GP training scheme, also based in the University of Limerick. Today I'm going to talk to you about evidence-based medicine, how medicine acquires its facts. From childhood, we're used to facts being very definite things. So, for example, grass is green, daffodils are yellow. In medicine, it's not so definite. So medical facts tend to be based on evidence. And depending on how strong the evidence is, will be how certain we are of uh, the truth of these medical facts or not. There have been uh, some fantastic drugs developed over the years which have saved millions of lives. For example, the discovery of insulin has saved the lives of millions of people suffering from insulin-dependent diabetes. However, there are other areas where we got the facts wrong. So, for example, in hormone replacement therapy, the initial studies on this were on healthy and health-conscious ladies who, not surprisingly, had a lower rate of heart disease than those who were less healthy and less conscious who chose not to take hormone replacement therapy. This reduction in heart disease was mistakenly attributed to the hormone replacement therapy. When it was looked at in more detail, they actually found that uh, the rate of heart disease was possibly increased by HRT. So all of a sudden HRT stopped being good for you and was now bad for you. So today I'm going to look at evidence behind uh, the so-called Mediterranean diet and use a simple tool to assess whether or not we believe that this is actually good or bad for you. We're going to consider a study that was published in a very high impact uh, prestigious journal called the New England Journal of Medicine. It was a randomized controlled clinical trial which is very good and it had an apparently definitive outcome. Those who actually went on the diet had reduced risk of cardiovascular events compared to those who didn't go on the diet and that reduction was approximately of the order of 30%. So the headlines are actually very good. So let's get a bit underneath the skin of this. To do this, I'm going to actually uh, use a variation of the method called PICO, P-I-C-O, and I call this PICO-D. So the first P is actually two Ps who paid for the study and what the population was. So why does who paid for the study matter? Well, we don't like when the people who paid for the study may actually benefit from its outcome. So they might have, for example, a vested interest in the outcome and that might perhaps influence uh, the outcome, either consciously or subconsciously. The second P is the population. Is the population that studied, is that population you? Or is it maybe a different population? The intervention, is that something that can happen every day or very easily? Uh, the outcome, is that one that's of relevance? And finally, D is the duration of the trial. So how long did it actually go on for? So in this case, uh, we find that uh, the study, which cost conservatively approximately 12.5 million euros, uh, was actually paid for by the Spanish government and various Spanish regional authorities. Now, why is that important? Well, Spain is actually one of the world's biggest exporters of olive oil. And guess what? Olive oil is a major component of the Mediterranean diet. So there's immediately uh, a conflict of interest, in my mind at least, and perhaps in yours as well. The population studied, well, these were a group of Spanish residents uh, aged between 55 and 80 years of age who were considered to be at high risk of cardiovascular disease. So they had type 2 diabetes, or they smoked, or they had abnormal cholesterols, they were obese, or they had a very strong family history of heart disease. Is that typical of you? Maybe so, but in a lot of cases, it's not. Uh, the intervention. So uh, the people that were studied were either given their ordinary diet or they were given the Mediterranean diet supplemented with a litre of olive oil uh, per week or 30 grams of nuts per week. Uh, the olive oil and the nuts were actually given free of charge to the people. Uh, they were also uh, given quarterly consultations with a dietitian for the duration of the trial, which went on for 4.8 years. Again, these are kind of extraordinary interventions that wouldn't normally happen in um, everyday uh, life. You don't get the nuts and the olive oil for free and you certainly don't get quarterly consultations with the uh, dietitian for free. Uh, interestingly, the protocol was changed during the trial and after three years, the 
control group also started to receive quarterly uh, dietitian uh, consultations. So change of protocol would be quite unusual and again is something that I feel a bit uncomfortable about. So what was the outcome? Well, if we go back to, say, insulin, it was very, very straightforward. If people had insulin-dependent di diabetes and they got insulin, uh, they lived. If they had insulin-dependent diabetes and they didn't get insulin, they died. So it was a very straightforward outcome one way or the other way. When the outcome isn't that straightforward, what tends to happen is that different outcomes, which may not of themselves be of statistical significance, are combined into a so-called composite outcome. And that's what happened here. There were no difference in the rate of deaths between the intervention group and the control group. But what they uh, did was they looked at the rate of stroke, heart attack, and death from cardiovascular disease. They combined those three together, and that was what they actually looked at, a so-called composite endpoint, which again is a kind of a black mark in my book against uh, the veracity and applicability of the study. Finally, D is the duration. So this trial went on for 4.8 years. So what happens after 10 years, 15 years, 20 years on the Mediterranean diet? The answer is we don't know because the uh, study didn't go on that long. So let's look at the outcomes and the figures. Intervention group um, had a rate per thousand person years of the composite endpoint of heart attack, stroke or death from cardiovascular disease of 8 per thousand. The control group had a rate of 11 per thousand. So this means that the absolute risk reduction is one from the other, which is three per thousand. There's a little thing we can do then if you turn that number upside down and divide a thousand by three, that gives you 333, which gives you the number of people that would need to be treated per year with this Mediterranean diet um, supplemented by the olive oil and nuts to prevent one composite outcome. So what's the cost of this? Well, if you're talking about the cost of nuts in, say, modern-day Ireland or Western Europe, you're probably talking about €48,000 per composite event prevented for those on nuts and about €160,000 for those uh, using the olive oil. That doesn't take into account the administrative costs of the trial or, indeed, the cost of the dietitian's time. So now what do you think? Noam Chomsky, the MIT uh, professor and author, said that education is about teaching people to think for themselves, uh, challenging the accepted uh, wisdom and basically thinking things out uh, and reasoning things out and perhaps getting underneath the headline figures. In UL, we like to give you the tools to actually do that, challenge the accepted wisdom, get underneath the figures and make out what you think for yourself. My name is Dr Ray O'Connor. I'm Senior Research Fellow in the GEMS Medical School and Assistant Programme Director in the GP Training Scheme, uh, General Practitioner in Limerick City, and would love to talk to you more about this if you wish to contact me. Thank you for listening.